Mordecai became aware that these men were trying to plot an assassination of Ashwaris. And you know what? Mordecai could have silent. He could have stayed quiet. After all, see, Mordecai was a Jew. His people, they were a conquered and oppressed people. This could have been an opportunity for him to seek revenge against a king who hurt his people. It could have been his opportunity to seek revenge over a king who stole his cousin, who took her unwillingly. He could have thought about all the evils in his own world and thought, I'm just a little guy. What can I do? But see, Mordecai wasn't looking at the politics of the situation. He didn't consider how it was going to benefit him. He knew what they were doing was wrong, and he had to do something about it. He went to whatever lengths were necessary to do what was right and to warn the king. He didn't go for the glory. He didn't go for the reward. He did it because it was right. His actions would later prove that not only did he save the king, but he saved his own people as well. See, we live in a world that is hungry for heroes. We are surrounded by so much darkness and evil, and there are so many opportunities for us to be a hero. So many opportunities for us to stand up for what is right. And yet so few choose to be a hero. So many are afraid to stand out. To take the risk. You don't need special superpowers to be a hero. All you need to do is to be a light in a dark world. You need to stand up for what is good and righteous in a world that is full of evil and sin. Jesus himself said it in Matthew chapter 5. He says, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Notice here that Jesus is focusing on outward actions. Outward actions are responses to the world around us. And not just our words. We are expected to live for Christ right now. So, Will you be rewarded for your faithfulness? Is, is, is that your whole goal? Is to be rewarded for being faithful? To be rewarded for standing up for what's right? See, that's not the attitude that Christ tries to teach. Us and even his disciples here. Because we need to do what's right simply because it's right. Not so that we get a reward for it. We do it to bring glory to God. I like what Matthew Henry said. He said, good subjects, and it, when he's talking about this passage in particular, good subjects must not conceal any bad design they know against the prince or of the public peace. Mordecai was not rewarded at the time, but a remembrance was written. Thus, with respect to those who serve Christ, though their recompense is not till the resurrection of the just, yet an account is kept of their work of faith and labor of love, which God is not unrighteous to forget. The servant of God must be faithful to every trust and watchful for those who employ him. If he appear to be neglected now, he will be remembered hereafter. None of our actions can be forgotten. 
Even our most secret thoughts are written in lasting registers. What you do now matters. We don't go around being heroes of our world just so that we can seek the rewards. That'll get taken care of. We, we should choose to be the heroes in a light, uh, be a light in our dark world simply because we know it's right and because it brings glory to God. That's all that it takes. A true hero doesn't wake up every morning and say, I'm going to be a hero today. That's my goal. I'm going to do something heroic today. I'm going to go save a cat from a tree. Life just happens. And an everyday hero responds to the troubles of life by acting like, unlike the rest of the world. See, the rest of the world is going to say, I'm going to do it if it benefits me. There's always a selfish motive involved. But see, a, an everyday hero, a godly hero, you're going to be willing to do what is right no matter what the consequences are, no matter how it affects you. We hear stories of people who stand up and st stand out, but, but how often do we, as believers, stand up and stand out for what is right? I'm not talking about being vocal uh, over some political platform or, or earthly ideology. I'm talking about standing for the truth of God's word and about obediently living according to God's plan for our lives. Take this excerpt from Fox's Book of Martyrs. If you've never read it, it is a fairly gruesome book, but it's very eye-opening. Under the fourth persecution of Marcus Aurelius Antonius, A.D. 162. Marcus Aurelius followed about the year of our Lord, 161. A man of nature more stern and severe, and although in the study of philosophy and in civil government no less commendable, yet towards Christians sharp and fierce. By whom was moved the fourth persecution? The cruelties used in this persecution were such that many of the spectators shuddered with horror at the sight and were astonished at the intrepidity of the sufferers. Some of the martyrs were obliged to pass with their already wounded feet over thorns, nails, sharp shells, etc. upon their points Others were scourged until their sinews and veins laid bare. And after the, uh, suffering the most excruciating tortures that could be devised, they were destroyed by the most terrible deaths. Germanicus, a young man, but a true Christian, being delivered to the wild beast on the account of his faith, behaved with such astonishing courage that several pagans became converts to the faith which inspired such fortitude. Polycarp, the venerable bishop of Smyrna, hearing that persons were seeking him, escaped but was discovered by a child. After providing a meal for the guards who apprehended him, he desired an hour of prayer, which being allowed, he prayed with such fervency that his guards repented that they had been instrumental in taking him. He was, however, carried before the proconsul, condemned and burned in the marketplace. The proconsul urged him, saying, Swear, and I will release you. Reproach Christ. Polycarp answered, Eighty and six years have I served him, and he never once wronged me. How then shall I blaspheme my king, who has saved me? And at the stake which he was only tied, but not nailed as usual, he, he assured them that he should stand immovable. The flames on their kindling encircling his body like an arch without touching him. And the executioner on seeing this was ordered to pierce him with a sword when so great a quantity of blood flowed out as extinguished the fire. But his body at the instigation of the enemies of the gospel, especially the Jews, was ordered to be consumed in the pile. 
and the request of his friends who wished to, to give his body a, a Christian burial, it was rejected. They nevertheless collected his bones and as much of his remains as possible and caused them to be decently interred. Those, those are everyday heroes. Those are everyday heroes. I'm not talking about them giving their lives for Christ, but at the face of such adversity and at the face of such darkness, what did they do? They stood as a light in a dark world. Polycarp, knowing that they were going to capture him and kill him, what does he do? He feeds the people who are there to capture him. He prays for them. And he acts in such a way that they regret having to do their job. somebody who stood up for what was godly and right, no matter the consequences. Their courage pointed other people to Christ. Some might say it cost them everything that they had. But you know what? You and I, if we, if we are believers in Christ, we believe that there is more to this life than just this. There's more than this. There is something greater in this life to be lived for, and it's to live for the glory of God. So are you an everyday hero? Are you holding to the truth of God's word, no matter the consequences? Are you living that truth and not only speaking it? You're not powerless against the darkness of this world. All you need is a willingness and the courage to live rightly in an evil world. Just like Mordecai. Let's close in a word of prayer. Our God and our Father, we thank you so much for this day. Father, we do thank you. That even though there was a bit of wind, there was a bit of rain, you held out most of it. God, I do pray that each and every one of us are taking this challenge very seriously. We live in a very dark world. We live in a world that is full of sin, full of despair, full of suffering. But you are the way. You are the truth. And you are the life. God, let us live lives that point people to you. Not just our words, but our actions. Let us live rightly and justly and godly, no matter the consequences. God, I pray that you give us the willingness and the courage as a church to do that here in Herman, Maine. God, I pray that you just bless this time and bless us as we go out from here into our world. We just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Shall we all sing? Thanks for joining us today. It's much appreciated that you kind of braved whatever weather we did have. I will get you going as soon as possible, just in case there's more. Let's close in order of prayer. Our God, our Father, we thank you for this day once again. We thank you for just being there for us. We thank you most of all for our salvation. God, we just pray your blessing on us as we go. In Jesus' name, amen.